Welcome to the Alcohol Minimalist Podcast. I'm your host, Molly Watts. If you want to change your drinking habits and create a peaceful relationship with alcohol, you're in the right place. This podcast explores the strategies I use to overcome a lifetime of family alcohol abuse, more than 30 years of anxiety and worry about my own drinking, and what felt like an unbreakable daily drinking habit. Becoming an alcohol minimalist means removing excess alcohol from your life so it doesn't remove you from life. It means being able to take alcohol or leave it without feeling deprived. It means to live peacefully, being able to enjoy a glass of wine without feeling guilty and without needing to finish the bottle. With science on our side, we'll shatter your past patterns and eliminate your excuses. Changing your relationship with alcohol is possible. I'm here to help you do it. Let's start now. Well, hello and welcome or welcome back to the Alcohol Minimalist Podcast with me, your host, Molly Watts, coming to you from, it is a sublime Oregon. I'm still looking up words, trying to capture what has been just an incredible run here in Oregon. Here's what sublime says, of such excellence, grandeur, or beauty as to inspire great admiration or awe. Definitely, it has been sublime here in Oregon. Uh, I know the rain is coming, in fact, here on the horizon. This week, we have some rainy days, much more typical of October in Oregon. But you know what? Interspersed rain and then these sublime fall days, it really is something that if you haven't made it out to the Pacific Northwest, I'm going to keep encouraging you. Come, visit, see for yourself what I'm talking about when I share all of this about a sublime Oregon. How are you doing? Welcome to the middle of the month, right? It's October 14th today that this is dropping. And so we are really halfway through a more sober October. And I hope that it's been going really well for you. This week's episode, I'm actually talking about something that has come up both in my group and in my coaching from people trying to understand kind of what I talk about all the time and interweaving that with the idea of doing a more sober October or more a traditional like sober October, like a full 30 day break from alcohol. So we're going to get into that. Anyway, if you have not checked out the Drink Less Success Program, I really want to encourage you to take a look at that. It's a great way to really extend what you hear here on the podcast and incorporate kind of a 30-day schedule in terms of learning, really. It's really about the learning, not so much about, yes, you will certainly, you know, can and should make some inroads into changing your drinking habits, that's for sure. But really what it's meant to do is help you get through 30 days of good foundational understanding of all the tools and tips that I talk about, understanding how habit change really works, understanding the behavior map result cycle that I talk about, understanding your core beliefs around alcohol and how we need to rewire your neural pathways and how to get your neuroplasticity working for you instead of against you. So drink less success, check it out, mollywatts.com slash drink dash less. mollywatts.com slash drink dash less. You got it. All right, on to this week's episode. This topic uh, has been, like I said, causing a bit of conversation and debate in my Facebook group and also amongst my clients. How can we approach something like a more sober October when we, when I talk about all the time about creating a doable drink plan, right? And about meeting yourself where you're at. So how do those two things interspersed? Because for many people, the idea of a full 30 day break from alcohol, like, like the challenges, like a dry January or a sober October, they can feel like that is really, you know, counterintuitive to what I talk about goes against the grain of what I teach here, which is small, sustainable changes that you meet yourself where you are and rather than forcing an all or nothing type approach. But here's what I want you to hear because I hear people asking this question. There's absolutely nothing wrong, by the way, with taking 30 days off alcohol. 
in fact, there's a lot of good that can come from it. So let's get set that record straight. Because I talk about a more sober October, that isn't because I don't believe that a 30-day break from alcohol is possible, nor is it that I don't think it's a good idea, all right? But what I want to encourage with doing a more sober October is that I want you to prioritize more alcohol-free days, even if you're not going to do the full 30. And the reason that's important is because so many people believe that if they set that goal of 30 days and they don't make it, that they've somehow failed. And when we set ourselves up with that kind of mindset, then we're not more likely to keep going and to try to keep working on this habit. We just feel like, okay, well, we're screwed. We're not, we're not capable of change. We're not capable. We're not able to moderate. That is not true. And I get questions from listeners who wonder if doing a 30-day challenge is actually counterproductive when we are focusing on making manageable change. And I get that because obviously there is a certain fear that embracing the challenge like a full sober October might be reinforcing that all or nothing mentality. And again, that idea that you're either 100% alcohol free or if you're not, you're failing, right? But here's the reality. When you're trying to tackle a 30-day challenge or just approaching, you know, a couple of alcohol-free days and adding those into your week, both approaches can help you gain awareness and improve your relationship with alcohol if you do them correctly with the right mindset, with the right thought work. A 30-day break from alcohol isn't a bad thing. It's not wrong. I'm not suggesting that it is. It can give you a reset. And if you're doing that while noticing some of the patterns that may have become too ingrained that you don't even notice anymore when you are drinking, if you really want to get down to brass tacks from a scientific perspective, because alcohol alters your brain's reward center, making alcohol-free days more predominant and doing a whole 30 day break really does help rewire those automatic cravings. So the thing is that even if a complete 30 days isn't your goal, simply having more alcohol free days than you did last month is a significant win. And that's the thing I want you to understand. It isn't that you can't, and it isn't that you shouldn't take a full 30 days off alcohol. And if that is where you are in terms of your own journey, right? If that is a step up, if that's a move towards continuous improvement for you, for you to take a full 30, then great, do it. The difference is that approaching that with all with willpower and with not going through the mindset work, understanding what's driving your desire to drink If you do that, you can willpower your way through those 30 days and go right back to heavy drinking starting in November if you're not, if you don't pay attention. If you do this and you decide to use that 30 day break as a reset and you are really looking at the reasons that you are including alcohol, what you believe you're getting when you are pouring yourself a drink, what is your alcohol core belief? that fuels your desire to drink. If you're doing that work and taking a 30 day break, great stuff, good stuff. And if you're not quite ready to do that, then meeting yourself where you're at and incorporating more alcohol free days, accepting progress over perfection is a very valid and great step towards creating sustainable change for the rest of your life, which is really what I want. So the all or nothing thinking, right? I see so many people stuck in a cycle where they think that if they can't be 100% alcohol free for the entire month, that they've somehow failed. I just want to be clear. There is nothing wrong with not completing a challenge like a full sober October or a dry January. What matters is the intention and the effort that you are putting into actually changing your habits. It's not about checking a box for 30 days. It's about how you feel after you've chosen to reduce or eliminate alcohol for even just a few days a week. It's noticing and staying mindful 
in those decisions, paying attention to what happens. We have to remember that real change comes from small incremental steps. Science absolutely supports this, right? If we want change that's going to last for the rest of our lives, that's how you do it. Small incremental steps. The habit loop that your brain gets stuck in with alcohol can be altered by reducing intake gradually and by introducing alternatives to that reward system that your brain is seeking when you reach for the glass of wine or your favorite IPA. Hey there, it's Molly taking a quick break to talk with you about Sunnyside. You all know that Sunnyside is my app of choice and my recommendation for a tool to help you create sustainable change around your drinking. One of the things that I love about Sunnyside is their commitment to improving the user experience. And that has been a constant since I started working with them nearly three years ago now. Since June this year, they have added the Android version of their iOS app. So now it's available for Apple users and all Android users. It's the same Sunnyside experience across all of those devices. And it's just another example of their commitment to improving the user experience. Another example would be the fact that now you can set it up for push notifications. So you can take all of the daily texts, the reminders, and put them into a push preference so that you determine how you want to receive the support from Sunnyside. I would love for you to check it out. Go to www.sunnyside.co slash molly to get started with a 15-day free trial today. I don't want to suggest that taking a 30-day break isn't beneficial because it is. These are not at odds, right? Taking a 30-day break is not at odds with what I teach. The benefits of taking alcohol-free breaks. Science shows that even short-term abstinence, so a 30-day break, has measurable benefits for your physical health. After a week or two, you'll likely notice better sleep quality, reduced anxiety, physical improvements like clearer skin and improved digestion. Now, I want to be clear about this too. If you're someone who is drinking, say, I don't know, maybe in the 10 to 15 drinks a week frame, right? Still considered heavy drinking by the NIAAA standards, you are not going to see like like the the amount of incremental change that you're going to feel in those physical improvements is going to be fairly small depending on how many alcohol free days you you kind of pull together right that's really the the key there is multiple alcohol free days in a row especially when it comes to sleep quality especially when it comes to reduced anxiety But if you are someone that is drinking more along the lines of the 20, 30, 40 standard units per week, you are definitely going to feel those physical improvements if you get down to zero to seven drinks per week right away, okay? And it's not just physical. Taking time off alcohol allows you to get back in touch with that why behind your drinking. Are you reaching for a drink because you're stressed, because you're bored, because you're tired? Those alcohol-free days provide a clearer lens through which we can view our relationship with alcohol. And studies have shown that even moderate drinkers, like I said, like the people who might consider themselves moderate drinkers, again, by, by definition, they aren't. But even a moderate drinker, when they take a break, report that they feel more in control of their drinking afterwards. So that's just, again, observational data that comes from people, they're self-reporting, They may actually be like somebody that's drinking, like I said, 10 to 14 drinks. They're not technically moderate drinkers, but they consider themselves moderate. When they take a break, they actually repeat, like I said, report feeling that they have more control afterwards. And that's because they are already rewiring those habit loops in the brain and giving their brains time to learn and understand that relaxation, fun, or stress doesn't come from alcohol. And you know what it comes from, of course, if you've listened to this podcast for any length of time, it comes from our own thinking. That's how we create the feelings that we want in our lives. We do it with our thoughts. So this more sober October, right? If you are doing it with a doable approach, 
it, it's really about prioritizing alcohol-free days without setting yourself up for failure, right? We're 30, we're halfway through the month. You still have time to increase or prioritize alcohol-free days if you haven't already. And I want to encourage you to ask yourself, how can I introduce more alcohol-free days into my life starting from where I am right now? Maybe for you, that means two alcohol-free days in a week. Maybe it means that you're going to aim for five alcohol-free days in a row. Whatever it looks like, make it doable for you. Come into it with a mindset where this small incremental step is good enough. It's better. It's progress over perfection. And again, there's no magic in the number 30, all right? But there is magic in the effort that you are making to change your relationship with alcohol one day at a time. As you start introducing more alcohol-free days, you'll also build up more confidence that you can do this. Now, I know some of you are still wondering, isn't this just another way of avoiding the issue uh, by not going all in? I hear that a lot too. And here's what I will say. No, it is not about avoiding going all in. It's about creating a sustainable plan that you can actually and might actually want to stick to. I've said it before and I will say it again. Change happens in the brain through consistency, not extremism. If jumping into a full 30 days feels like it is too much, then start now. Start with a more sober October. Start with these last two weeks of the month and see how you feel. This isn't about you know, setting yourself up for failure. It's about creating a plan that works for you and will help you create sustainable change for the rest of your life. You're building up your alcohol-free muscle, so to speak, over time. The more often you practice going and having and prioritizing alcohol-free days, the stronger and more capable you will become. Now, I do want to talk about something else that is crucial because this has come up in my coaching this week. One of the core principles I believe and in and teach in is this concept of Kaizen, which is continuous improvement. Again, continuous improvement through small incremental steps. This is why meeting yourself where you're at is essential, but it is also equally important to not stay there too long. Comfort zones feel safe, but staying in them too long can hinder your progress. If we're not challenging ourselves to take the next small step forward, then we are missing an opportunity for growth. Kaizen teaches us that improvement doesn't happen overnight. It's the result of small, consistent changes over time. And this applies to your relationship with alcohol too. This is why what I teach is different because so many people believe, and so we are taught by the recovery industry, we are taught by the, alcohol, by the sober only folks, that you cannot do this with alcohol, that you can't treat alcohol like an area of personal development or growth. I categorically do not believe that's true. You absolutely can. It can be just a habit that's no longer serving you. And you still have to treat it with the respect that the known toxin and drug that it is. So after you have settled into a rhythm of alcohol-free days, I want you to ask yourself, what's the next small change I can take on? Can I add another alcohol-free day this week? Can I push through the discomfort <laughs> the next time I have a craving for, an, you know, for drinking on a day that's supposed to be alcohol-free? Or when I have decided to include alcohol, Am I willing to make sure that I'm sticking to the guidelines and to the plan that I've established? Science backs up the importance of stepping out of your comfort zone, right? Research suggests that short-term alcohol-free breaks can significantly improve overall well-being, mood, and long-term behavior change. And a study published in the British Medical Journal found that participants who abstained from alcohol for just one month saw improvements in insulin resistance, weight loss, and reductions in their liver stiffness. So again, 
taking a break from alcohol and pushing ourselves, if that's where we are at with our relationship with alcohol, is not a bad thing at all. I remember when I did my very first dry January, for those of you that have been listening to the podcast, I actually, you know, for that long, I did it here on the podcast. Go back and listen. I did my first full dry January in 2021, and I've done them ever since. So 2021, 22, 23, 24, and of course I will do it in 25 as well. But the first month, the first time that I did it, It was definitely pushing myself. I was ready for that step, but I was definitely out of my comfort zone. And so I don't want you to take what I tell you in terms of meeting yourself where you're at and not being willing to push yourself out of your comfort zone because you are expecting yourself to be perfect and that you fear failing. That's, I think, what's at the heart of that. And we still have to remember that doing this, making the decision, the goal is not to just be good at managing alcohol, but it's to get better, to keep improving. And we may have that opportunity by misstepping, by having an off-plan drinking moment when we've set ourselves up for a 30-day challenge. That's okay. There is nothing wrong with that. That is an opportunity to grow, to challenge our thinking, to see ourselves. And don't be afraid to take on that new challenge. Risk failing. That's how we grow. I hope that you leave this episode feeling encouraged. Whether you are taking a full 30 days this month off alcohol, or if you are adding in and prioritizing more alcohol-free days, you are definitely making progress. The key to this, to creating a peaceful relationship with alcohol is to keep showing up for yourself, meeting yourself where you are, but also being brave enough to step beyond that comfort zone and risk the fear, risk failing, risk having a set, you know, a quote unquote setback. It's not a setback. It's just a step in a different direction. We got to look at it, right? Now, I hope that, again, whether you are taking that 30-day break, whether you're just incorporating more alcohol-free days, I want you to feel really positive and really motivated to make these last two weeks of the More Sober October your best weeks yet. You still have that opportunity, no matter what's happened in the first two weeks, right? Start now. Start today. Decide. I am going to create a plan for myself. I am going to push myself out of my comfort zone. I'm going to add in an extra alcohol-free day this week. I'm going to see how that feels and I'm going to keep remaining mindful. I'm going to keep checking in with myself. I'm going to keep managing my mind, becoming a better thinker because I want to be at the end of the day, an alcohol minimalist and someone that includes alcohol in my life in a peaceful way. If you are curious about how to implement this more in in a more structured way, I would love for you to, again, check out Drink Less Success or come join us in Making Peace with Alcohol. That's my six-month group membership. And I would love to help you take this work a little bit deeper and build a peaceful relationship with alcohol in a way that works for you and for your life. That's all I have for you this week, my friends. Until next time. I hope it's sublime where you are, and if not, choose peace. Hey, thanks for listening to the Alcohol Minimalist Podcast. Take something you learned from this week's episode and put it into action. Changing your drinking habits and creating a peaceful relationship with alcohol is 100% possible. You can stop worrying, stop feeling guilty about over drinking, and become someone who desires alcohol less. I work with people in three ways. You can learn about them over at www.bollywatts.com slash work with me. Or better yet, reach out to me directly. It's molly at mollywatts.com. We'll jump on a call and discuss what's best for you. This podcast is really just the beginning of our conversation. Let's keep it going.